Welcome back to Understanding Python. My name is Jake, and today I'll be covering map and filter. Map and filter are two built-in functions that make it easier to modify iterables. These two functions are great for people working with data. This builds upon the understanding of iterables you gained in my previous video. If you haven't watched that yet, please pause this video, watch it, and come back. And now, let's get started. So effectively, map applies a function to all values in one or more iterables, and filter runs each value through a function and creates an iterable with all truthy values. First, we'll start with map, and to show you the value that map provides, we'll start with some common patterns you'll see within Python code and how map can improve it. First, let's create a few lists. We'll create a list. That will be the explicit conversion to a list of a range object from 0 to 9. B list is going to be similar, so we'll just copy this, paste it, rename it B list, but this will actually go from 10 to 29. Now a common operation would be to add two numbers together, and this is a good example as we don't need to get bogged down the details of the function that we're going to be applying to these lists. So we'll simply make a new function called add. And this is going to take in value 1 and value 2. And that simply returns value 1 plus value 2. Easy enough. Now how many beginner programmers would approach the problem of adding the values in these two lists together would be via a for loop. So we'll create a new list called added. And we'll do a for loop and we're going to iterate over value 1 and value 2. And the way we're going to put these together is with the zip function, which I covered in a previous video. This is going to zip together a list and b list. Now keep in mind that these two lists aren't the same size. A list has a length of 10, while b list has a length of 20. The iterable that zip creates will always return the values up to the shortest iterable. So A list will have values 0 through 9, and B list will have values 10 through 19. So the second half of B list is getting skipped because it is longer than A list. Now the actual operation of adding these values together and putting them in that list is just added dot append and we're going to pass those values into the add function. So we're going to pass in the arguments value 1 and value 2. And this works perfectly fine. If you've watched my video on list comprehensions, you know there's a way we can also do this in the single line. And we'll call this new list added comp or added comprehension. And for this, we can reuse a lot of that same code. So the operation that we're performing on this list is this section right here, add value 1 and value 2. And then we're going to copy this part of the for loop and add it in here. And now we have a new list comprehension that's going to do the exact same thing as lines 12 through 14 does. So how does map make this easier? Let's demonstrate what map actually looks like. We'll create a new one say added map is equal to map. If we look at the call signature here, we see that it takes a function. So the function is going to be add. And for iterators, we're going to pass in a list and b list. This effectively does the same thing as we did on lines 12 through 14, as well as on line 16, including the zip functionality meaning that since A list is shorter than B list, map will stop iterating as soon as it reaches the end of A list, not passing along the second half of B list values. Another important note here is that if you're passing multiple iterables, the function that you're passing them into must be able to accept that same number of arguments. You see here we have A list and B list. Those are two arguments. A list values will be passed into the first argument for add, which is value 1. B list values will be passed into the second argument for add, 
which is value 2. With all that said, now that we've saved the file, let's load this up interactively in IPython and take a look at each of these values. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room and first take a look at added. Here we see added has 10, 12, 14, etc. until 28. Exactly as what we'd expect. Added comp has the exact same values as well. And then added map is actually a bit different. That is because map returns an iterator. So we could loop through each value in map to get it out. Here we see values 10 through 28 just as above. Or we can explicitly cast it into a list, which is what we'll do on line 18. List map. Okay, now that I've saved that, let's go back into it. Look at added again, added comp, and then added map. And here we see we have the exact same values. Now, if you want to optimize this even further, we can use another concept that I've covered in my video on functions, and that is a lambda function. A lambda function will allow us to define the function that we want in the map call signature. So let's see what that looks like. Added map is equal to map, and then we're going to use a lambda that has the same functionality as add. So lambda, we'll just take in x and y, and then return x plus y. Still passing in a list and b list. And of course, let's not forget to cast this into a list. So this even further reduces the amount of lines of code needed to perform this functionality. Not only are we saving on two additional lines as compared to the for loop version, we also are saving on an additional two lines for add because this one line contains all of the functionality that's covered between these lines. Before we save this, let's make sure that we change the name of the variable that we're storing this to. We'll just call this added lambda. Save it, go back in. Again, we'll take a look at added, added comp, added map, and then added lambda. Four different ways of getting the exact same value. The last of which is admittedly a little bit harder to understand if you're a beginner, but once you're comfortable with both map and lambda functions, this kind of pattern is very powerful. Okay, now that we've covered map a bit, let's move on to filters. Now, as I said, filters run through each value in an iterable and creates an iterator containing only the values of the iterable that is truthy when run through the function. So the function we're going to use to demonstrate this we'll call div by three. And this is going to return true for any value that is evenly divisible by three. Again, this will take in a value and return not value modulus three. So let's break down this statement. Value modulus three will divide value by three and return any remainder from the division operation. If you have a value like five, 5 divided by 3 does have a remainder. So this will be a non-zero number that's returned from this operation. Now saying not here turns this into a Boolean evaluation. Remember that 0 is a falsy Boolean value, while say a positive remainder has a truthy value. So the result, if we were to pass in 5, would be false or not true. If we passed in a value like 6, this would return true. So this is the function that filter is going to use to decide which values we want to keep from our iterable. We'll again start with the for loop example. We'll just call this new list by 3. Make it equal to a new empty list. Then we're going to loop through each value in a list and check if divisible by 3 value by 3 
dot append value. So this will populate by three with each value that is divisible by three. We'll skip the list comprehension version as we've already covered that above. But let's see what this looks like in a filter version. By three filter is equal to filter. Again, we're going to pass in our function, which is div by three. And then our iterable is going to be a list. And of course, since this also returns an iterator, we can explicitly convert that into a list. So here we see that we truncated lines 26 through 29 down to a single line on line 31. And of course, we can save even more lines if we use a lambda. So we'll go by three, lambda is equal to list filter lambda, which will take in a value and return not value modulus three. And of course, we're gonna apply that to a list. All right, we've saved that. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. And then again, load this up in IPython. And let's look at these. By three, we have zero, three, six, and nine. By three, filter, again, we have the same values. And then by three, lambda, exactly what you'd expect. And to get a better understanding of how this is working, let's go ahead and use map to see our Boolean values for this list. By three, map is equal to list map. We're going to pass in div by three as our function and then a list as our iterable. We'll save, go back in for reference. Here's the result of applying the filter. And then the map we see true, false, false, true, false, false, true, false, false, true. So we have true representing zero, then one, two, three, true again, four, five, six is true again, seven, eight, and nine is true again. So that's really what's going on underneath the hood. Filter seeing each of these true or false values and deciding that each of those corresponding true values needs to go into the iterable coming out of filter. Now that we've covered both map and filter, let's put these two concepts together for something neat. For this, we'll need a C list. And the C list, we'll just say it starts at 30 and ends at 60. And the reason why I want three lists is because I wanna make a three point coordinate system. So X, Y, and Z, where X would be A list values, Y would be B list values, and Z would be C list values. So we'll make a new function called two point, which will take in an X value, a Y value, and a Z value. However, we want to make it a bit flexible because we want this function to be able to handle cases where you're only passing in either an X value, an X, Y value, as well as an X, Y, Z value. So we'll set Y default equal to none and same with Z. We're going to temporarily store X in an underscore X variable. And then we're going to use an F string to put it in the format that we want. And that would be X colon X. Y will be similar. So an F string Y colon Y. But if we're not passing anything in, we don't really want to format that. So we'll say that if Y else none. So this reads underscore Y would be this string. If a value for Y is passed in, otherwise it equals none. And since the default for Y is already none, we can just say, make that Y. And then we're going to do the exact same thing with Z. Now we're going to do a neat trick with our return statement, because I want us to have our X, Y, and Z values separated by a comma in a space. So for that, we're going to use join. So we're going to join them together with a comma and a space. However, we don't want join to just add extra commas when there isn't a value that goes there. 
Also, join doesn't really like it if you pass in a value that's not a string, which could be the case for underscore y and underscore z if those values aren't passed in. So what we can do is we can use filter to decide which values are being passed into join. So we're going to join on a filter. And this filter could look like lambda value return value. Because if a value exists, that would be truthy. But if that value is none, then that would be a falsy statement. So it would be removed. However, filter does provide a neat tool. You don't have to implement a lambda like this. You could simply pass in none. And none checks for those truthy values. So if you filter with none as the function, it's going to do just a simple truthy check. And what we're going to filter on is a list with underscore x, underscore y, and underscore z. And now we have our two point function. And thanks to filter, this is now very flexible. To demonstrate this, we're going to use map. So we're going to make a new list called x points, which is going to explicitly cast a list from the iterator that map returns. It's going to use the function two points. And this first one is just going to pass in a list. And we'll also cover the other two scenarios. So x, y points will not only pass in a list, it'll also pass in b list. x, y, z points will pass in a list, b list, as well as c list. Okay, so I've saved that. Let's give ourselves quite a bit more room and let's finally load this up in IPython. Let's take a look at x points. Here we see a list with our x values, x0, x1, x2, etc. Now if we look at x, y points, we see we have both the x and the y values, x0, y10, so on down to x9, y19. Remember that map will truncate the extra values that extend beyond the shortest iterable. And then finally, x, y, z points combines all that together. x0, y10, z30, down to x9, y19, z39. So here we've created a pretty flexible system using both map and filter to combine three different lists into a formatted coordinate system. And I think that's pretty neat. Well, that wraps up this video. Now that you understand map and filter, there likely are some optimizations you can make in your code. Give those two a try and let me know how it goes. What is your favorite trick with map or filter? Or was this something I showed today? Leave a comment down below to let me know. As always, today's code will be added to the understanding GitHub repo. So check the description for a link. And of course, if you have any questions or suggestions for topics you'd like me to cover, leave a comment for me. To keep up with this series, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.